con ayuda de, de un montón de voluntarios que vinieron hoy de la comunidad de Sámara, de las comunidades cercanas, incluso hay gente que, que manejó más de dos horas para venir hasta aquí hoy, entonces eh, es súper agradable eh, tener esta oportunidad de, de venir a sembrar estos árboles aquí por medio de, de diferentes organizaciones, incluyendo la nuestra, la de Costas Verdes, eh, con el programa Bandera Azul de Sámara. Es, es una pequeña actividad de algo que se viene más grande para, para el año que viene, ojalá y pues, entrarle más, con más fuerza, con mayor participación en toda, el, toda Playa Sámara. Entonces, muchas gracias. Rogo, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for inviting me, Rich. We uh, haven't we haven't sat down in a while. I know it's been a while. I'm glad you're back, buddy. <laughs> me too. Me too. I would argue that Berguiones and the efforts and the things that have happened from from you guys over over the past years is nothing short of remarkable. And I don't know if everyone in Osara who's here now knows it. I think five and seven years ago, everyone did because it was small. It was a, what's going on here? Where did these trees get here? Now we have a lot of new people coming into Nosara. It's not just the same Florida, California, a little bit of Canada, a little bit of Europe people. It's now, it's just so different. I know. Nosara is an ever changing place. It's a fast growing uh, tourist destination and community. And, and yeah, like uh, we have to keep up with that and it's very hard for us to, to keep, keep up with that rhythm and the rhythm is getting like faster and faster. So keep reaching out to people. It's a lot of work. Um, so it's a, it's a very um, important challenge we're facing at this time. And, uh, but we're trying to do our work and I know like um, pretty soon, um, You start. You will start seeing a lot of uh, Costas Verdes reaching out to new people coming in the community. Well, heck, let's yeah. get started with that today yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but before we get to, to your, the stuff that you have going on now, some people might not know what's up. Can you go ahead and retell the story and share with people who might not know what we're talking about? Absolutely. So um, before. 2011, which is when Barriones started, um, Guiones, the Guiones beachfront and great parts, a lot of the 200 meter part of the refuge um, was in really poor shape. So like we're talking about like this beach that used to be a cattle farm So air, all, all of its original forest ecosystem was depleted, was fire, like when it uh, was burned and cattle was introduced uh, along with the cattle, obviously all the cattle grasses and the species that, that farmers use, not only for the cattle themselves, but to contain the cattle uh, as well. So uh, when the land changed use and was turned into a tourist destination, Not long after the, it was created, the refuge. So like we're talking about like 1984, 1985, uh, Oceanal Refuge was created to protect sea turtles. And, um, <coughs> and Guiones was an extension of the refuge a year after the refuge was created, right? What a godsend that was. Like that, that between the early people getting the green areas and getting trees to come back and come back from the agriculture tourism tell me if this is right it seems like this is one of the few places on the world tourism actually brought things back it is crazy Nos isn't that weird nosara is, has such a unique history right so it went from being a cow farm into being as opposed to be golf residency, uh, tourist and um, thing. It's a big country club development on paper. <laughs> I know. And like, thank, thank, thanks to that, they had all the neighborhoods done, all everything section, all the roads and everything. It was just like a clear path. So when that didn't came through, it was just a clear path for the people who, who actually came for that and that didn't came like they led up the way to become like to to become uh to have nosara become this uh amazing tourist 
um, community. With, with filled with nature compared to other places, all off a colossal development country club failure that it, never happened. It is crazy that what was supposed to be the gold greens <laughs> turned into private parklands. And that was, and that is incredible for us. And I'm going to tell you why in, in a few minutes, but also like the beachfront, someone told me like it was intended to become like back then it was supposed to be, um, like a airstrip for, for, for airplanes. Um, and then I don't know what happened, but the beachfront, which was clearly devastated, like it was not in a very healthy shape when it was even like a cow farm, um, was left alone to its own restoration because in the, in the 1980s it became a refuge. So there was this 200 meter setback from the high tide line, right? Um, and then there's all these parklands that was, were created thanks, thanks um, <laughs> shout out to, to Nosada Civic Association for doing that amazing job. That's incredible. Uh, but that is actually a great example uh, to compare like how quick like forest and jungle restored in these parklands and then on the beachfront, it didn't. And there was so many, uh, there was a bunch of um, reforestation efforts and activities done by the NCA and by the, by the neighbors and uh, on the beachfront and all the trees were dying. Talk us through that because you guys were the first time it like caught and worked and then the community got behind it. But again, fill us in on how that happened. How'd you get so much momentum? Why did it work? And then after that, I want you to get, get us up to speed with what you're doing next. But for right now, tell us why yours work. Because right now, Panama, Nicaragua, all over the place, really the, the planet, like people need to learn from this. Yes. It's a true example that tourism actually did good, believe it or not, in a world of just tearing everything down. There's some glimmers of hope and here's an example that people can learn from and people, again, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's off of a colossal country club failure project coming straight out of agriculture dedicated to nature reserve and the people got together to tighten up the other stuff and here we are today absolutely it is crazy i don't know i don't know how to connect everything and tell and tell the story so that it has a perfect sense to it but it just had all these um all these things happening and it was bringing all these incredible people, uh, some of them conservationists or activists, some of them just wanted to have like a place where they could retire and they, ha they would have like a lot of jungle around them. So anyway, like all these like parklands were restored by their own, but the beachfront was not because it was completely devastated from its resources. So the coastal ecosystem was not capable of or not resilient enough to build up from there and restore its forest. So we're talking about like the land change of use, like since the early seventies, when, uh, when the golf course thing was going to happen and it was left to its own, uh, process or restoration from there until like 2011, which is when Costas Verde stepped in. How did you guys get it started? That's a good one. Uh, so Costas Verdes actually started in the Central Pacific in Playa Hermosa. That was 2009. I was already here, and uh, my body. That's you. 2009, and you were at the Harmony at that time. I was at the Harmony at that time. Uh, we know each other. We were surfing already, then, like back then. We're, we're getting we're, old. <laughs> we're getting old, man. Yeah. <laughs> Costas Verdes was being very successful starting their first project in 2009 in Hermosa, which is in the Central Pacific. And it has a completely different like uh, pattern of rains uh, and a different climate than here. It's it's like more of a rain rainforest. And here is like a transition uh, where, where Nosada is located is right like on a transition phase in between like rainforest and dry and dry forest. So uh, we got a little bit of uh, dry tropical forest influence, like which is more up north, uh, and then like a lot of influence from the from the rain tropical forest. So we got actually great diversity of trees and plant life in general, because uh, we got the best of the two worlds. But anyway, that that was disrupted, and uh, since we had like this um, story <laughs> in Nosada. 
uh, our, our founder, Max, after being successful in, in Hermosa, he wanted to, you know, to expand the horizons and do a, a different project. Um, and so from, Nosa, from Hermosa, he came to, to Nosara and presented a proposal to do a tree planting campaign uh, to the Nosara Civic Association. And, uh, and they approved his proposal. They, they funded this, this first tree planting campaign. And guess what? It was not very different than, than the first uh, tree planting activities. This was a great learning experience for, for Costas Verdes. It was not as easy as, as Playa Hermosa, but, uh, but it was challenging and it was motivating. And I was here and I met Max and we became buddies. and. And I told him like, hey man, like whatever it takes, I'm going to be here and I'm part of Costa Verdes now and let's make this happen, man. I'm this is totally 12? This is 2011. This was okay, May, okay. May, June 2011. We had a, a tree planting campaign on the last week of May, first week of June. We planted uh, 1,500 trees and very, very few of them survived. I still have a couple of pictures of that. Yeah, like deep in the animals. Yeah, I remember it. Surfing Nosada took some pictures during the, the tree planting campaign, um, and I was working at the Harmony Hotel then, and I was uh, just like pushing this tree planting campaign for for our staff in at the at the hotel and for our our guests. Some of our guests came planting trees, and we had like uh, you remember Leaf Shriver, I think it's his name, the actor. The, um, I remember some fellow named Leaf in it being a yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, so that's Wolverine's evil brother right and the X I didn't know that I, I had no, no idea well that's that's my favorite like his his my favorite uh, movie from him I don't know I don't know many movies of him but anyway I saw a movie and he was in town and he happened to be at the beach the very first, the very last day of our tree planting campaign where we also had a surf contest. We had a surf contest at Ionis Beach and he was there, Max, our founder, after finished tree planting, he signed up for the surf contest and he was in the surf contest also. That's awesome. And he did awesome. He then like to semis or something. <laughs> shut, shut up, respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a good surfer, man. Uh, anyway, uh, he planted a tree with us. So that was our first very celebrity planting a tree in Guiones uh, with Costas Verdes. And we have, ha we have had some celebrities planting trees uh, with us here, as well as in Hermosa and in other, other projects. But uh, that's how it started. Uh, we had a terrible first year with like barely anything survived. Uh, that kind of like fired me inside. And so we did a second tree planting campaign next year. Uh, fewer trees that once that we were able to raise in, in our in our nursery at the, at the Harmony and um, and then we started changing you know little things or like the containers where we were uh, or the bags where we were growing our trees the species how big were, were we um, growing the tree before being transplanted into the beach and it was just like this learning cur curve that went like this and now like the learning curve is like becoming more like this you know how you when you learn a new skill in life how you jump like from being like a beginner surfer everything picks up like this and then like things start like plateauing to, yeah so uh, so right now we're kind of like this <laughs> we still need to peak but um but yeah it's been a it's been a quite an experience quite a ride uh going through a pandemic having to reinvent ourselves uh, it's been quite a ride. When did you know it was going to work? Because I remember when it started, there was a lot of hope, and but there was a lot of uncertainty when that first big planting like didn't connect. And I saw it in your eyes and heard it in your voice. When did it transition from, we got to make it work, into, all right, it's working. Like, all right. when, 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 when was that moment? All right, there's a combination of things that happen. First, El Nino okay. phase. It is extremely difficult uh, for, like it, it makes things a lot more difficult for, for tree planting at the beach. Because, uh, well, it just brings drought, mm -hmm. right? It, it brings a lot of, uh, it, it takes away the rain. And at the, the beginning, beginning phases is when they really need to get the irrigation and the 
And yeah, all. yeah. So like the very first years, we were <laughs> carrying um, <laughs> like <laughs> jugs of water, like all the way, like from the hotel or from our first tree nursery, and and then like bringing them like you know like all the way to the beach and like yep. like that. It was crazy, man. But um, I was trying to have like all my bodies at that one tree so, and have them like you know I remember uh, that. water some you know some some trees. I actually survived from that. I so, thought it was cool. I, I thought it was amazing. I liked how you connected ownership and a personal like feel to it. Yeah. I yeah. thought that was really smart. And I don't know if it was Mario. It was what I had avail available back then. It was like the only thing I could think of without, you know, like basically no resources we had there. Uh, we were all volunteer based. But things um, actually started changing um, in 2014 when we did our first uh, proper tree nursery uh, in Nosara Beach Hostel. That's where we were okay. set initially, and so we started picking up seeds from you know from local trees around here. We started like putting a lot more effort. I I I, I took a lot of volunteers from the hostel and some other volunteers from our community and we're putting a lot of time into that and then little by little we started collecting some donations and then we were able to hire our first two field workers and uh, one of them has been with us like for almost nine years now, Rolando. Shout out Thank Rolando. You, Rolando if you ever watch this episode I hope you know that I you know I appreciate you a lot. So, and, so you and, and that was out. the game changer, hiring two field workers. Because the thing is that uh, trees wouldn't survive if you, if you don't give proper, constant, consistent maintenance to, to them. You have That's to, what I was like, just about to ask. It sounds like you figured it out when you got your staffing, your attention, and you must have had just enough donations or someone stepped up so that you could work full time. You had a new spot. And then we started uh, outreaching to to small businesses and be, well, a, any kind of business around here. And we started our sponsorship program. So like with our sponsorship program, we were able to raise consistent funds to keep our, you know, to keep our team uh, oper operating in Costas Verdes uh, throughout time. Your levels of that was good too, by the way. Mm -hmm. We still Dude. got it going, and it's uh, it's been so so, so successful. Uh, and uh, I want to you know give a, a shout out also to all of our sponsors because um, you know without them we wouldn't have been able like to go through all this time. You know, like since I'm talking about like nine years, mm. you know, all, already. Like the thing when we first started our sponsorship program, it was like in our minds it was we need to get like a consistent uh, source of funding to be able to pay our employees, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we set up that. But then we came to realize <coughs> that, wait a minute. So we do all this call out to volunteers during our tree planting campaigns and many businesses are supporting us like, or you know, are, are cheering us, but they say they can make it and then they can't go to the beach with their employees and, and, and plant and, you know, like, like actively put their hands with us because they have a business to attend. It became like this sponsorship program, it became the best way to actually be able to engage with local businesses that can't put their time into planting trees or into going to volunteer at uh, the beach projects or at the nursery. But you can still be united and pull everyone in together. Yes. And and it came as a great concept that we didn't know back then, but just, it, it just was a you know, perfect fit that when a business becomes a sponsor, a local business, a local and, and the local part of, of the sponsorship program is like key because you know like we have this sponsor that is putting money is betting on us and is committing that this project that is on his local beach and it's going to get and if it does well it's going to benefit uh, his his business indirectly or directly uh, or both and if it's successful, I'm going to be a part of the success. I'm going, I'm going to be successful because my business was playing a part on having, you know, 
restoring the coastal forest in my beach. Man, that's a beautiful point. Like yeah. that, 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 geez, that's powerful. But if on the other hand, the project fails and my business is sponsoring this project, then that's going to affect me negatively, right? That's going, you know, it, it can. It I mean, if, if someone like digs in and, you know, <coughs> and, you know, ask around or whatever, uh, then it is um, negative to the business. So it actually is something that puts a lot of pressure on Costas Verdes to, you know, to do things right, to, to keep on going. We're getting all this funding from all these local businesses. So we have to show up and we have to, um, you know, there's nowhere to hide. It's, yeah, you have it's, to execute. The, it's a public area that everyone goes to to have fun and goes watch the sunset and go surf and go walk their dog and go walk on, you know. You guys can't escape anywhere if you mess up. We or... can't. We can't. That's the thing. And we would have uh, have to shut down Cosas Verdes if, <coughs> probably if we have failed at that point. All right. So, Gerardo, again, big thank you to you, everyone. That's, a, that's an amazing story. But a lot of stuff's happened from when you started to now, even if it's just been 10, 12, 13 years, it's pandemics, global market changes, Noasara being basically a tiny little, you only went there if you knew about it or someone told you about it town. And to now people are just showing up from everywhere. And also there's so many other nonprofits. It's always been competitive in Noasara because the same money's getting extracted from now this place to this place to this place. So... At some point in this episode, I want you to get get to today and also tell us what you're looking for and update me on your struggles. But before we do that, can you can you f help explain like how you went from a trial project that basically was failing until you got your own nursery, things started going, but you were dealing with agricultural land that had been sitting barren. It's all messed up as you described earlier. And... But if you go to the beach today, those trees are fantastic. They're standing strong. Like it looks, none of your past challenges are visible today. So can you kind of bleed it together uh, in a way so that somebody who's been here for a while can, can hear it? And also somebody who's brand new can kind of hear the, what am I trying to say? Like the recipe to make this work. All right, yeah. Like So like for the first years we have like this, like, um, very non successful rates of survival and the trees growth and you know like the the beach looked like very similar to how, how it used to be until like we started like hiring our our staff and field workers and we started our tree nursery and things like started changing a little, little by little we started also involving the local schools since our very beginning uh, but, um, however, like what, like things, like the thing that really, really changed, um, the game for us was, um, hiring local people and then raising our trees over here. So we were able to start experimenting with local species of trees that were sticking the best in certain areas or that were growing better when they were being planted more closely together okay. or they kind of needed to be mixed so it was really like what really took off uh, or took the project off was like all these things coming up you know during the the dry seasons being able to water and we have been able to water with partnerships also with local hotels local restaurants or local uh people who who are basically <laughs> having their their properties um uh, bordering the refuge so they're donating water to us and we were able like to you know to properly water water our newly planted trees uh, during the first their first or first couple of dry seasons nice so, so residents and changed. businesses formed uh a unifying foundation to help you get and continue to operate. In the meantime, you were learning what grows where and when and figuring out Absolutely. basically like a chef, like a, a cook. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. You have to, you know, uh, learn from mistake. I don't think like there's a degree that can prepare you to deal with these kind of projects because it's 
they were it was not looking easy from the very start i knew it and uh max knew it like we we, we knew it it was going to take a lot um we were not giving up and well things started like uh some of our trees started doing better and better and better and the thing is like when a tree uh adapts and survives and and starts you know taking off like <laughs> it will help other other trees that are newly planted over there and it's going to they're, they're eventually get connected throughout their root system and that actually like kind of, kind of like helps out like one tree helps the next gotcha so it's a snowball so, yeah so your momentum begets momentum and that explains why you guys have had this significant curve. absolutely and at a point we were planting over 5,000 trees in guiones each year so uh we have planted over 33,000 trees in guiones we have reintroduced 75 native species into the into the ecosystem uh, or reinforced uh, the the species that the very few species that were there already. Um, the thing is, like you will have like you've seen the pochote tree. The, the pochote you know can be huge, but um, if you put a pochote on the beach and it's lo- left alone, it it will get like a bush, like a a bushy spiny plant. And you won't even tell that it's uh, it's actually a tree until you get like competition. You put some competition and faster growing species, and they like start competing. Then then the pochote will be like, oh hey, wait, wait a minute, where's the light going? I see. You know, I need to start like growing up. How many years do you think that this process took to where you guys, okay. like I said, you like you really felt it? Like now we know what to do. We've got it. Like. Yeah, well, it's still going. <laughs> Maybe it never ends. It never ends, uh, and that I'm very grateful for that because that keeps me very motivated and very. Uh, What's well, also this is your, this is your purpose for life. Like this is uh, this is what you're supposed to for do. For sure, that this gives me uh, a lot of fuel to keep on going and to keep on. Um, <laughs> you know, keep myself, like I said, inspired, motivated. Um, and you know what I get constantly? Like I get a lot of like friends and local people coming to say, hey man, have you seen the project? It's, it's so, so amazing. Like your trees, <coughs> or our trees are taking off and it's now a forest. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah. I wish I would get like so excited about that because you know, that's my job. And when, <laughs> when you get like your trees, like, and you go to the beach and you see like, okay, this group, this grew a, a little bit more than this other one. So what do I need to make this other one grow a little bit? And then I just have like all this critical thinking and I can't have like time to get like, Oh, this is awesome, man. <laughs> oh man. You know, like so you, I wish you, do, could... you brought an interesting point there. You do have, uh, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes for a moment. When you sit out in the water and look back, you see heaven and hell. You see new houses, sometimes big houses, popping up all over the place. But then you also see the fruits of your labor, like literally growing in front of you, kind of almost blocking them. Yeah. <laughs> you oh, see, yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like, you know what's a funny uh, thing? Like um, the surf can, they had to change it and they had to put it like more up. But that was good. That was good. Like, well, they, they had to do that because the trees were starting to cover and, this and means it's working. screen the, you know, the camera. But since they put it up, now you can see further and you can see, actually see like the surf conditions way better. Have you ever had any complaints from people about the tree plantings? If so, I'd be interested in that. Uh, I don't think it's very worth to mention. We have like some uh, people like, you know, being not supportive <laughs> well that, that's it seems very hard i mean i've been i've been here for a while and i've been involved or around a lot a lot of the nonprofit stuff and some are harder than others barry to me is the most universally accepted people saying oh that's good yeah. that i can think of out of all of them i'm that is, do you feel that way or oh. is that just me no man i'm so lucky I'm like very fortunate like that it's been so well adopted and so well you know nurtured by the community and this is this is uh, very amazing but because this hasn't been the case in some other of, of our projects even Hermosa we have some some of the developments being like 
um, <laughs> you know, uh, underground, paying someone to uh, to put on put put fire on 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 their beachfront or on their um, you know for them to have like a clear ocean view. And even though we try to do our diligence and go talk to the the um, landowners or house owners and have them understand, like you're not gonna lose your ocean view. We're actually enhancing but you have to see the big picture like all you can see when well all you saw when you first built your house was just like this plain ocean view like imagine how that would be with putting some like scarlet macaws on top of that you know like on top of a canopy and having your ocean view just be like a lot nicer you know with some shade that I, that you can actually see like a little bit more um how do you say it with less shine or less brightness yeah yeah like and you know some people just can't here i've only heard one open their minds I, I, in all the years i've only heard one person say anything and it was from a homeowner up on las Huacas. they were mad at us for supporting it being so visible and he's like you guys are ruining the place we're gonna lose our views what are you doing this is your industry i get i want i like the planet too but you're not paying attention and they gave they gave us a pretty good talking mm -hmm. too that's the only one I've heard, and I think your answer was spot on. The view's going to get better. Now you have foliage and animals and a changing tapestry, and some of the plants and trees bloom at this time of year, and it adds colors and enhancements. Well, at some point, like, those house owners in, in Las Huacas, they're going to be, like, watching their, you know, their, their ocean view, having their ocean view with, on top of that, like scarlet macaws flying on couples like and doing like you well, know, and also they'll never get fully blocked how much sand no. do you need to see? No, <laughs> like, it's it's, so stupid so anyway that was the only one i've ever heard and it was so it was so absurd that i just i've never really i haven't thought about it since except for if i just wanted to laugh or make a joke or say something smart aleck but as you're saying that right now i'd love to know any other uh things that you hear that you want people to know? Like, uh, what's some common misconceptions or what, what's the challenging side of this for you? All right, I'm gonna go back a little bit in our story and, uh, and actually say like, well, we're working on public land which is managed by uh, the MINAI, the environmental you know, ministry. This is their, uh, you know, they ad administer, manage these areas. It is their responsibility. And uh, NGOs oftentimes are born with the idea of complementing um, a service that the local government or that the government okay, is okay. not fulfilling and it should do. You know? That makes uh, sense. You know, yeah. And so in our case, uh, we were born to complement Minai's work that they're you know taking care of the of these refugees of these national parks but they pro they started or they created this wildlife or this natural protected areas uh in order to preserve sea turtle nesting grounds but the place is not very well suited anymore to hold this nest and mm -hmm. to have the best conditions for the nest so it is obviously not in its best best shape it is not where it's supposed to be after they create all these areas, um, they left them to their own restoration and, uh, and natural restoration doesn't happen the way it could happen that our job is fast forwarding the natural restoration process on the coastal forest. Because when you wipe out a coastal forest, like what you're doing is basically opening up um, um, a canvas or a, like a, a landscape for very competitive invasive some of them a lot of them exotic species to go cover this land very fast they'll take over they colonize and they won't let trees to uh, to or tree seeds to go in and sprout and and then uh, compete and out compete the vines and the and the shrubs and the herbs uh, which is what was happening here it's still it's still happening uh, it is it is more complicated than just seeing like, oh, we got like this like clear canvas, let's just like plant trees and, and boom, you know, you have mm -hmm. a forest. 
Minai is the one uh, in charge of doing this, but sadly, like our government doesn't put or doesn't have, or is not efficient enough to put like funding and, and programs into reforesting these areas, which are very important uh, part uh, for 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 the turtles. You know, the refuge was created for the turtles. The, re the turtles are not having the best conditions, but um, these areas are not recovering. So that's why Costa Verdes was born. We were born to fulfill this service to complement the the you know our our Ministry of Environment in this very specific task. Um, this is a very very specific thing that we were born to do. We see ourselves as this non-profit organization, grassroots organization that it came to um, do a service that complements Minai and this is our you know one of our most important uh, cornerstones uh, we have to be of help to Minai we have to help them manage the refuge in the way that we can in wh whatever we can do we don't have the authority of like I don't know like um, you know taking someone out of the, of the refuge, but we are uh, working with the Minai to restore the coastal forest in the refuges. So back to your question, the thing is that there's a lot of people coming into Nosada, and this happens in other places as well, but this is a very, very important case uh, that are not knowing that this is a wildlife refuge, that they don't know, even, even less, they don't know that there's turtles coming here to nest. Uh, they think that they can come here and, and do, and not, I'm talking about foreigners, Costa Ricans, even local people um, doing a bonfire at the beach where when it's, you know, not allowed to do that, when there's many illegal things that uh, are backed up with a scientific or a technical reason why, why a refuge it's um, but why, why people are able to do certain stuff, but they're not um, allowed to do other stuff, and it's all because of a uh, you know a, a very important uh, environmental reason mm. um, for for the for the main part. So we have to keep in mind that we live in this community that we're extremely fortunate to have these two hundred meters of refuge, and everyone going to the beach are gonna look back to inner land and see no buildings on the beachfront. This is very unique. Uh, and Nosada is a growing community, a growing tourist uh, destination that has that uniqueness. How valuable is that? And if we look at that and uh, cherish the fact that we have this unique uh, situation, we have an opportunity to to become a very important case of sustainable tourism and sustainable community. This is it's not only that Nosada is a, is a destination, it is a community, right? There's, there's a, low, uh, a very historic community of Nosada. There's like the, the, the historic community of, of expats that came here and then it's all this dynamic going on. Uh, there's a lot of tourists that became uh, part of the community. And, and this is the dynamic happening over here. Many people don't know that, that we have a refuge over here and why this refuge was created. So uh, a lot of the work that we're destined to do now or that we envision doing now in Guiones as well as in other parts of the refuge, as Pela, we have also a, re a reforestation project in Pela. It's uh, a lot more, it's only it's less than four years old. Uh, is to communicate is to communicate people to, you know, to passively enforce um, what the refuge is, um, you know, set for people or for its users to do or not to do. Can you tell us what you need today? What are you facing today? Because again, Osara is way more popular than it ever has been. And there's more competing enterprises to get money. And they come on this podcast, we talk to them. I haven't talked to you in a couple of years. That's weird. I used to see you all the time, but we get old things happen. It just hit me the other day when I was traveling in Nicaragua, I was thinking about you nonstop. I was like, I got to get here. Here, you got to come up here. And that's, I was reaching out and then it hit me. I haven't sat down and talked with you about Varigioni since 
before COVID. Like, yeah. so shame on me. Uh, it's something that like I'm very much behind and supportive of, but I've been too distant. So I felt bad. I wanted to get you back in here. So tell me and tell whoever's listening, where are you at? What do you need? Because you guys have the love. The results are there. There's no reason why people shouldn't be supporting this outside of someone being like me. I was just being lazy and busy and not paying attention. So put it on me, man. I, I, I really appreciate you reaching out again. Um, it's been, I believe, more than four years since, wow. since we last talked over here. So things have change a lot we have gone through a pandemic we have to reinvent our funding channels uh, or you know uh, may maybe you know like take someone out and re adjust re and survive re readjust readjust yeah but um it is very important for me to state that we're no we are not over with guiones so we have set uh, in the vast majority of the project area, uh, a canopy. At least on the on the rainy season, you'll see like you'll go under the shade on the ninety percent of the time when you're using the trails. Uh, and that was took a long time. Uh, it's it, and it's still going. Thing is, like once you do that, it is not that it's just gonna stay like that. Like if you if you're like doing a landscape project in your garden, you need to you know to give it maintenance. To you you need to readapt to stuff happening around, and that's just how it, how it works in, in in our project. Like the thing is, like it's a very very large um, landscape project. Yeah. And so the ongoing maintenance is something we might not be thinking of because we just see it. And what you're pointing out is, hey, this is still, Absolutely. this chapter is still unfolding. We have to Absolutely. Date. Like there's things going on in our project in Guiones alone uh, that are not happening in any other of our projects because this is by far mo our most advanced uh, project regarding restoration. We have... Has you, a lot of you, eyes on it. It's your whole. It's your. What do you call it? Your flag or your like cornerstone? Like you needed that one to work. Our case it. study, we call it. Okay, we call yeah, it our exactly. case study. For example, since we already have like this canopy set, it is compound not by all the species that it should have because some of them did very great uh, back where when the conditions were very very tough, and they were able to pioneer the or the set the pioneer stage and and create this canopy but later on uh, we need to start reintroducing um, other species that are a little bit more vulnerable fragile they need like more more shade or they need like a little <laughs> bit more of organic layer in the soil or they need like m uh, an enhanced or an improved um, moisture retain retainment in, in the in the soil I, I got you. so Guiones is now conditions. this big but it keeps spinning I'm just I'm sorry I'm interrupted just mm -hmm. I want to bounce over to plot and we'll see an all too before we run out of the camera. So Guiones is a machine that's spinning, but it still needs to be fed. It's just a bigger spin. But then you have OST and all project, then Pilata project, and you want to go beyond. So basically, you've got to get all these spinning everywhere. Absolutely. Man. So the same amount of money from 2012 must not work in 2022. And as we record this, is 2023. We've got about three minutes of battery left. What do people need to hear? Nosara has become our, our, our case study in the way of the, the conditions here were very difficult to, to face in the beginning and we have proved that it's possible. And we have done a great deal of, of work. And like I said, we have planted over 33,000 trees, reintroduced 75 species. We have worked with over 30 schools and uh, over 9,500 volunteers. It is a lot of history, man, and this couldn't have happened with the incredible, extraordinary support of the Nosara community, uh, their businesses, <laughs> their you know local people, people who are volunteering or putting money, and everything, everything about Nosara was perfect for Costas Verdes to be able to set this case study in Guiones. All right, so to keep the machine going, though, you need money. We need funding for sure. Right now we're working on our five to ten year, you know, vision, and it involves a lot more than what people are seeing, and we we can get more into this in in a little bit, but um, but Costa Verdes is meant for more, 
and we're aiming for more and uh, Nosara can be the place where Costa Verdes has position and where and, and where it can expand to the sides. And this is what we have been doing in our last years in Camaronal, in Barrigona, in, in Pelada. And there's people, so many people calling us, thank God, that there's uh, a lot of other communities wanting to start their own project because they see Guiones as what have they done like like how did they did it you know and and it's been a long way but we need to continue doing so and we need funding for that and i think nosara can be the community where costas verdes can you know start going bigger i could not agree more again for the millionth time thank you this is your mission man don't let up no we're matter not. what keep keep going we're not keep going and you're coming with me one country north ideally later this year they need you a lot of places need you and i hope that becomes like your 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 missionary man maybe you're not going around preaching a particular doctrine but you are yeah that applies it's to a, all of a, us it's a different expression of love man but it, but it is you thanks know? for coming on man. it unites people man it's so powerful that i you know like for for me I want everyone to experience like what I get. I just talking able. about it, man. That's that's right. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you. I'm not gonna go four years without seeing you again. <laughs> I apologize. Right? Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. And I want to thank you, uh, all of our sponsors. Like, thank you, thank you so much because without you, uh, you know, the, the trees that you're enjoying in, in the beach. And I promise you, someday, like not too far away, you're, we're gonna be seeing. Uh, Scarlett Macaulay flying over the beach and and Harder monkeys, uh, you know, throwing some poop at us at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to that squirrel, it's always throwing us stuff. Thanks again, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah.